Well, friends, if you recall, in part one of the vice bill here, and I'll leave a card up in the corner in case you missed it, I was struggling with the concept of using the milling machine to make the vice jaws. Since it's December 29th and the steel supply is closed until January 2nd, I'm going to go ahead and use the milling machine. Now what I would do if the steel supply were open is I would go over there and I would just buy a piece of steel bar that is the appropriate size for the vice jaw. Instead I just used a piece of one inch plate that I had hanging around. Then I cut it and milled it to square it all up. So I don't know if you noticed but that piece of steel was pretty banged up and uh, had a lot of gouges in it and stuff and I just wanted to use a milling machine to square it up and take the saw marks out. Now these pieces of half by three inch flat bar are what we're going to use to hold the jaws in place. And here I've stacked up all four cut pieces in the vise and we'll just grind them so they're exactly the same shape. Okay, so this is going to be the end of the dynamic jaw, and this stack of plates will be inside it. These two will have the bearings in them. From here we want to prep for welding, and we do that by grinding bevels on all the thick pieces because we want to give a place to fill up with weld. We don't, we don't want the weld piling up on the outside of the joint. And then we also grind the mill scale off every part that's going to have a weld on it. Now some folks may be wondering why I'm going with this all thread and not acne thread. And I'll tell you the reason. You can get acne thread cheap. I saw it at Granger for $18 for a 3 foot piece, but that was grade 2. This is grade 7. And if you want grade 7 acne thread, it's 30 bucks a foot. And the nut that you're going to need for it is 60 bucks. So that would have added 120 bucks to the cost of this project. And the fact of the matter is I'm not even into it 50 bucks yet. Now looking back to when we had to disassemble the first vise, I had to cut it apart because it was all welded together. One thing I want to change on this one is I want to make everything so it can be fully disassembled. This will be my head cap. We'll slide it on there and we'll drill holes and tap threads into this piece so this will bolt on. That way the screw and the thrust bearings can be removed without having to cut it up. We'll do the same thing with the tail. So I think the first thing we should do is weld this head and this tail piece together. Now this end is made of three 3 8 inch pieces of plate steel and that piece of tubing. There's a really healthy bevel on each one of them and each time they go in I fill that bevel with weld. So that middle plate I'm just going to tack in there with those four tacks and then when I weld this last plate in it, that will hold everything in place. So now we'll come in with a hole saw and bore this plate and that plate to accept the thrust bearing. Now here looking at the tail end we have the smaller tubing inside the larger tubing but the larger tubing is only there to locate it in the middle. Then we'll move on to plug welding the coupler nut inside the tube. Then using a caliper we'll locate that round tube exactly in the middle of the square tube. And this big flare-up that you see is from carburetor cleaner I had hosed in there to clean out the area. After tacking, I go back and check it to make sure it's still square and still in the middle, and then I finish up the weld. Now this green stuff here, called Anchor Lube, I'm not sponsored by them, but I recently discovered this stuff, and it really makes a difference anytime you got to do any cutting, like using this hole saw to drill out that 3 8 inch plate. Now there's a place for a thrust bearing there, and the thrust bearing there, and a 3 8 plate in the middle. We're going to have to bore that out to 3 quarter inch. Okay, here we are clamped up with our jaw stanchions in place. They're aligned, they're square, and they're ready to weld. I've got my nut. I'm going to do a plug weld in there, and then we're going to come back and install some ball detents in the side of that so the handle will stay on. So we begin by laying down some really generous tacks around the perimeter at all the joints. Then we'll come back and weld those solid. Now this is only a total of about 48 linear inches of welding, but it took a good 45 minutes 
Because of the thickness of the metal and those big bevels I left in there, I had to use the zigzag weave technique to be able to fill up the weld gaps. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to install the thrust bearings on the rod. And then this is the outer thrust bearing. Then we'll drop the inner thrust bearing and a washer. Look how nicely that spins. Okay, so I've made a couple of sheet metal wrenches to get to get in there on those jam nuts. And this was one of the problems of the last rendition, is uh, I had no way to tighten these jam nuts. Now that's nice and tight, but it's also quite filthy in there from weld spatter and stuff. I'm going to have to take this apart and clean that out. Okay, now that is quite a bit cleaner, and it will now slide over the end here. Then we will insert this into the other end and tighten it up. Now the screw is doing two things. It is drawing the tail into the body of the vise and it is aligning the screw with the threaded nut. Now with everything nice and tight, we'll drill and tap our holes for our securing bolts. Now there's a chemical called Dichem that's kind of pricey and uh, it's used for marking layout lines, but uh, if you're a tightwad like me, you just use a sharpie. Now the screws that I'm going to use for this are 3 8 inches in diameter, so I think we're going to I think we're going to center drill at 5 8 Now the purpose of the sharpie marker is to leave a surface that my caliper will easily scratch a line into because you don't want to wear out the sharp edges of your caliper. Now I'm debating on four or eight screws. I think I'll go with six. Two on the sides, one top and bottom. Then after we get all the screws marked and center punched, we'll head over to the drill press and drill them out with a quarter inch pilot drill in preparation for the 5 16 tap thread drill. Now the screws I'm going to use are these 3 8 16 thread per inch. Um, flathead with a hex key in the middle. It said these are not the ones I'm going to use, but these are the ones I have. So uh, for the purpose of the video, we're going to assemble the device with these. Uh, the ones I'm going to use are uh, grade 8, and they are not expected to be here for another four or five days. So here I'm drilling a quarter inch pilot hole. We'll follow this up with the tap drill size of 5 16 Then we'll disassemble it thread the inside pieces, and enlarge and countersink the outside pieces, because we don't have threads in those. And here I'm tapping threads into those holes that are going to receive our securing bolts. Then we'll move on to enlarging and countersinking the non-threaded portion of all those holes. And after installing the screws, I discovered that they were still proud of the surface. So I had to go back and re-countersink actually into the threads partly. Then it's on to the next step, which is reassembling the vise one more time. Now, if you're wondering why I hadn't put the jaws on yet, it's because this process of drilling and tapping these holes was very likely to shift things a little bit. So now that all the holes are drilled and tapped, we'll go ahead and clamp the jaws in the vise and then weld them into place. Okay, so I bolted the jaws together to make sure the alignment was right. Now we will clamp them into the vise. Now all I need to do is uh, tap threads into the soft jaws and bolt those on, but before that I'm going to tear it down and paint it. 
So the last thing I want to do is install these spring-loaded ball detents in the nut of the drive screw. And I've never done that before, so this is going to be an experiment. Take a look at how they're made. They've got a little shoulder there. So I did an experiment. I drilled a hole, and then I counterbored it with the next size drill, and that seems to be in there pretty securely. So we're just going to go with that. Now, I don't know if the camera can really see that well, uh, but there's a little counterbore in there, and I'm going to drop those ball detents in. Then I'm going to come around the edge with a punch and uh, kind of close that hole with the punch. Okay, those should do nicely. And the fit is pretty good, but there needs to be a receptacle inside the wrench to be able to engage the ball detents. So I think I'm approaching the final time I have to assemble this, so I want to lubricate these bearings. And the stuff I've decided to use is called Never Seize. It is a, uh, a graphite grease compound. It's super messy, gets all over everything, uh, but it really works well. <laughs> One thing I left out of this vise was a seal for the thrust bearings, but the thrust bearings in the last vise were just fine when I took it apart. Now, if this is really going to be the last time, I better wax that. Now, one thing I thought about doing was welding an anvil plate on there, and I may do that later, but for right now, I just want to get my vise back. So, at 16 threads per inch, that screw is 20 inches long. That's 320 turns to get that vise closed. But it's going to deliver a lot of force. Okay, so this job is almost done. I'm going to put a couple of uh, steel pegs on here, one to hang a crescent wrench and the other to hang a hacksaw. And I also want to put a loop down there to mount my hammer. And I want to put the vise on there. Now the other thing I need to do is tighten this wrench up and then pour some divots for those ball detents. Now you know what's great about painting something right after you weld it? The paint dries instantly. Okay, so I filled that in with weld and then I filed it back out so it fits onto the onto the nut. Now we'll go in with an abrasive cutoff wheel and we'll create pockets for those ball detents to drop into. Alright, there we go. And that is working pretty smooth. Now the only thing I have left to do is file that out and and make the uh, ball detent receptacles in this end also. And if you want to see the result of that endeavor, find me on Instagram. My name there is wildman.tech. I'm happy to answer any questions in doobly doo below, so please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Click up here to see my last video. Click over here to see something of mine that YouTube thinks you'll like. And have a good one.